everybody. Back in January, I had the opportunity to uh, unbox and review and even tear down the original Raspad. And uh, as I remember the device, I liked it. I used it primarily as a computer, not as a tablet. Um, I would hook a keyboard up to it. And the, the number one thing that people hated about that device was that it had a little USB cord that kind of came out around the outside of the unit and plugged in the side and that just felt kind of janky overall i liked the device um i thought it was fine um but raspad contacted me and asked me if i wanted to check out their latest raspad 3 which is based on the raspberry pi 4. so this is my raspberry pi 4 this is their raspad and they did send this to me free of charge, told me I could do whatever I wanted with it. The last one that I reviewed, I wound up shipping up to Alaska um, to do some remote building monitoring. Uh, kind of nice to have a little Linux machine you could take around with you. And uh, so let's take a look at this one. Uh, the box is a little dinged up. My wife actually opened up the main box that it came in. I was on the road and I was super curious as to what was in this random uh, UPS package. So uh, it says easy SD card access, six axis gyroscope, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, portable with battery, 10.1 inch IPS touchscreen, and a stereo speaker. It, uh, it's it got easy block visual programming, music and video, game, office software. Uh, let's see here. The software is Raspad OS. Okay, now see this, I think that's interesting because the other one... I just used the standard, what was called Raspbian at the time, uh, and now it's called Raspberry Pi OS. Uh, but it seems like they at least made their own skin for the thing, which I think will make a huge difference in the touch. Uh, so it's got a one year warranty, three to five hour battery life. This one is space silver with some physical buttons and, uh, yeah, 1280 by 800 screen, 16 by 10 aspect ratio, uh, 10 point multi-touch. Nice. So, okay, let's, uh, let's take a look on the back here. Uh, yeah, okay, warning, you could choke on this thing, so don't eat it. it. may say raspberry, but that doesn't mean don't eat it. So I've never opened this up. You're seeing what I see as I see it. Ooh, well, the box is upside down, or the manual is upside down. So we've got a printed manual, and this looks... This kind of looks like, oh no, it says Raspberry 3. The picture kind of looked like the original Raspberry Pi. Uh, yeah, okay. So we're not going to give away too much of what's in there. We'll set the manual off to the side. And let's open it up. And we have this. Now I'm going to try to keep it tilted so that you're not just seeing constant reflections. Uh, okay, so I do like that they have access to the GPIO out here. Uh, we've got micro SD card battery life indicator, power, volume, all that kind of stuff. I think one of the other things I remember that was kind of weird about the way the other one worked is that you had to push the power button once to sort of activate the battery and press it a second time or press and hold to turn it on. Uh, that was a little weird, but the, uh, you know, it worked, worked fine once you got the hang of it. Nothing really here on the front. Oh, it's got, oh, okay, it's at least got the ports. If it doesn't have the pie in there, it at least has the ports. Uh, so yeah, your Ethernet, your USB ports. So let's take a look at this. Yeah, I mean, that's not the pie unless, but, uh, yeah, it's definitely not the pie. So they've broken out the ports and that's how they're dealing with not running that cable outside. Nice. So we've got a headphone jack and a power adapter. Uh, one of the things I was wondering is, does this have any active cooling? Cause as many of you know, the, uh, the Pi 4 can run a little toasty. I'm guessing there's some active cooling in here. We've got some speakers. Uh, a little hole down here, CSI, I don't really know what that is. Uh, some kind of interface. Uh, crime scene investigators, who knows. Uh, so, okay, I'm going to set this off to the side. Let's take a look at what else is in the box. There is a, it's funny, I asked if one of these was included, and uh, I didn't think I was getting one. This is a Raspberry Pi uh, four, uh, 2 gigabytes. This is the 4-gigabyte uh, model. Uh, let's see, does it have anything on the SD card? Does it have an SD card? Okay, so no SD card in it. Um, I was sort of wondering if it came pre-configured. Let's take a look here. Yeah, so that's sweet. I wasn't expecting that. Nice bonus. Thank you, Raspad people. Okay, we got our power brick. Thought it was open on one side. So this is a... Um, 
100 to 240 volts, 2 amps at 15 volt output. Um, not the heaviest duty uh, power brick, but should work. Got the US power cable. I should tell you also, I, I didn't mention this at the beginning of the video. I believe this is a pre, uh, pre-production unit. I don't think it's quite an engineering sample, but this, this may differ slightly from what you guys get. Uh, this, if I'm understanding, I'm getting something from the very first run of these tablets. Uh, so we've got your US power cord. Let's see what we got in here. Some other fun stuff. All right, so we've got these little uh, little jumper cables, and uh, so we've got this is USB C to USB C. Uh, it looks like angled USB. Oh no, that's probably is that? Let's make sure that's USB C. This is probably the micro HDMI to micro HDMI. Little teeny tiny Ethernet cord. Look at that. It's kind of cute. Looks like an old school phone jack. Uh, this is a, uh, a USB three to USB three, and uh, another one of those little HDMI doohickeys. We've got uh, some heat sinks, some little screws, a uh, what the heck, a little fan controller and a little fan, and a screwdriver. That's actually kind of a nice, nice little screwdriver. So I wanted to give you an idea what it's like to put this thing together. And uh, before I did, I wanted to confirm with the company that this is an engineering sample. This is a pre-production unit, so yours might look slightly different than mine. The next thing I wanted to confirm was about the Raspberry Pi. Um, I noticed that there were some differences. So I bought a Raspberry Pi 4 gigabytes when it first came out, and uh, this is the one they sent me. And there are some differences. Uh, when you look at the board over here, you can see that, let's get them both going the same way. You can see there's just some different silk screening. Um, mine is a revision, or it says 2.8 here. This one says 4.6. Uh, when you look at the Ethernet jacks, mine has some writing on it. This one doesn't. So because of that, I wanted to make sure that I used the one that came with the kit so that I was giving you guys the same experience that I'm getting out of the box. And at this point, I don't know if this is going to ship with a Raspberry Pi or not. I'm going to go ahead and assume not. But uh, let's take a look at the thing. We're going to open it up here. This is obviously a better design. Uh, this is a, a custom PCB that's basically made to mirror all these ports so you don't have that cable running out along the side. We've got a battery pack here. They say I'll run it for four to five hours. Looks like it's just made out of uh, 18650 batteries. And so yeah, let's, uh, let's go ahead and put the two gigabyte Pi in. Okay, so it's not showing anything about screws right now. So we're just gonna put these cables in end to end. I didn't even notice there's two different uh, angled connectors here and one of them is shorter than the other. That's a very nice touch. Like that doesn't seem like much, but having this cable in two different lengths so that one is gonna come outside the other one like that, like that's just good design. Like that really is. Um, kudos, like especially cause you know, the other one I felt like could have been a little bit uh, better design. So that's good. So we're gonna take this and go here. I didn't even notice that 90 degree connector. This one's longer too. So that's, that's pretty cool. So that comes in here, a little bit of tension on that to get it to go over the screw holes. So it came with three heat sinks and we're going to go ahead and put those on. Okay, so we're going to grab this fan and let's see, label side in. Ooh, that fits nice. I like that. And they want 2.5 by 9. I'm, a, I'm an American. How am I supposed to know what 9 millimeters is other than my ammunition? Okay, I got the device powered up and uh, the first thing I want you to hear is that. Um, I would consider that pretty loud and uh, I'm kind of torn because that's you know, the, the, the original one had the cable coming out the side and that was a little annoying, but I think the fan might actually be worse. Now I'm really, really hoping that they are going to switch out the fan before they put this into production. And so what I'll do is I will update the description of this video if they do tell me that they're going to change the, uh, the fan. So I thought to myself, if I'm gonna tell them that they need to change the fan, uh, I should do a little bit of investigation. So I got my other Raspberry Pi 4 case and I started taking this thing apart and you can tell that the fan itself that's already in there is not that loud until it gets down here. Let's see if we can do it without breaking any fins. It's actually the case that's making the fan loud.
So I haven't spent enough time with this device to give it a full review, but um, let me tell you what I think so far. I think it is a very, very good Raspberry Pi screen. There's a lot of Raspberry Pi screens on the market, and I think that as far as screen quality goes, this one is amongst the best. It's also a very good touchscreen experience. Uh, I've used a bunch of the different Raspberry Pi touchscreens, and they are so-so, but this one I think is the best 10-point multi-touch. It's just extremely responsive. It's very good. It feels, it feels right for a touchscreen, um, so I love that. Uh, in terms of the power, the Raspberry Pi 3 base systems could never really pass uh, for everyday drivers. They're just sort of good for uh, basically server applications. I would say that you could get by using this as a mini desktop type thing. Uh, I think the best use case for this is to use it with a keyboard and mouse and occasional touch. Um, what do I, what else do I think about it? It's heavy. I mean, there's just no ifs, ands, buts about it. It is heavy. Like sitting here with it in my hand like this, like it's, uh, I've been filming for about 15 minutes and it is, it's hefty. Um, so I think the best use case for this is for it to be sitting on a table, uh, with a keyboard and mouse, occasionally pick it up, occasionally yank the power cord out and trust the battery to, um, you know, to get you a little bit of action on the road there. Um, what I used them for in the past is carrying around is basically just a little portable Linux computer. Uh, you know, when I need Linux on the road, I don't run it on my laptop. Um, you know, a little bit of experimenting and things like that. It's, uh, it's, it's a fun toy. Like that's really what it is. Uh, I think the fan needs to be addressed and I hope that they do. Um, I love Raspad OS. And I would say that no matter what device you buy, if it has a touchscreen, you probably want to install Raspad OS. I put this on a 3B and a 4B uh, and it worked on both of them. So, I mean, there shouldn't be any issues with that. Uh, so yeah, I would definitely consider Raspad OS as one of the highlights of this device. And so again, I'm going to put it through its paces a little bit more. I'm going to test out the battery life over time. I'm going to uh, decide how I want to implement this thing in my lab and what I want to use it for. Um, but these are just my initial impressions. It's a well-built device. You can tell that it's way better thought out than the last one. I, oh wow oh hey the the gyroscope works uh yeah i didn't know that so yeah it'll change orientation it's i mean they did a really good job in terms of what they were trying to do they uh got rid of most of the aggravations of the old one i think the battery life is a little bit better the ports are a little bit better um there's just a lot more thought into the design of this so if you liked the last one i think for the most part you'll like this one better um do you need to run out and buy it i don't know um, do you need a Raspberry Pi tablet? If you do, this is, this is the best one on the market, hands down. Uh, so anyway, I appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate Sun Founder sending it to me. So I know people say this all the time, but I would love to hear what you guys think of this device. I want to hear who you guys think this thing should be marketed toward. Um, who would use this? Would you use it more as a desktop computer or would you use it more as a tablet? Um, you know, what do you like about it? What do you not like about it? Uh, it's a, it's a very interesting product. For those of you guys who don't know the history, they raised a ton of money on Kickstarter to get the first one out. And, uh, it was a massive success in the maker field on Kickstarter. And, uh, I was kind of surprised when they, I didn't even know they were making a version three of this. So to have it show up at my door was pretty awesome. And so, uh, yeah, I, I think they did a lot of cool stuff, but I want to let know what you guys think. So I appreciate you watching. Thanks for sticking with me and have a great day.